Tell us your name and where you're from. My name is Stephen Davis. I am from good old San Diego, sunny San Diego, California. Yes, indeed. So tell us what shaped your leftist beliefs. Oh, goodness. Uh, culture. Um, I was kind of raised um, to have a racist worldview, unfortunately. Um, it's a generational thing, I must say. When it comes to uh, leftism, when it comes to racism, which leftism and racism are synonymous with each other. So when it came to me, my mother, she grew up in the era in which there was a, quite a bit of racism still lurking around. And as a result, you know, it kind of shaped her worldview in regards to uh, race and, and uh, dealing with especially the white community. And not to mention the fact that uh, when I was a young kid, um, she was married to my biological father and my biological father ended up cheating on her with a white woman and then left her for this white lady. And uh, needless to say, that left a very nasty taste in her mouth. So when it came to the racial aspect, that kind of filtered down into how she raised us as children, me and my brothers. And it was a lot of different uh, unfortunate situations that happened to form her worldview that then uh, trickled down to me. And it kind of unfortunately shaped the way I, uh, I interacted with people. And uh, that kind of transpired into um, not just the racial aspect of my leftism, but the um, idea that you know, I can't make it, that people are gonna try to hold me down and hold me back. Um, even though my mother did tell me that I can achieve greatness and I can do whatever I want in life, it was still one of those situations where, well, the white man's gonna hold me down after all, so I don't know if I can make it. And after a while, it got to the point where it started manifesting in the way I was treating people. It started manifesting in the way I looked at uh, humanity and, and I started subscribing to different news outlets, of course, and listening to what the news had to say. And of course, the news reinforced such uh, negative stereotypes and such a negative worldview that is completely false, by the way. Uh, talking about how you know, society is systemically racist and culture doesn't have an aspect or play a role in this. It's all society. It's all the white man. It's all this. It's all that. No self-accountability or responsibility. It's all because of people trying to hold me down and hold me back. So a lot of my leftism uh, was in direct response or di direct correlation to my racist worldview. So how did you feel when President Obama was elected? <laughs> I remember I was working a security detail at this time and the people I was working for, we all had this big celebratory party, right? This black man is in office, the progress in this world and everything's changing. Oh, the black man can finally uh, achieve greatness to the point of being a president, even though in reality, we can do whatever we want at any given daggone time. But at that point in time, I was like, oh my gosh, oh, a black man entered office. Oh, progress for the black man. And then uh, eight years later, many within the black community realized we were duped. I mean, you look at a President Obama, he is the ultimate con man, right? He is the epitome of a pimp, right? Or a player. Players and pimps have the gift of gap. They know how to say all the right things at all the right moments to try to get you and believe in them and believe everything that they're espousing. No, he is using you for his own personal gain and his own agenda. And that's what happened during the Obama presidency. What did he do except for go on an apology tour and then talk about how cops are racist and all this type of fueling the fires of rage and fueling, fueling the fires of racism that happened during his presidency. What did he do? So was there a defining moment that changed your beliefs? It was at the end of 2017, the beginning of 2018. And I still had my racist worldview. Um, and I was looking at the situation and I was like, you know what? I am so daggone sick of these daggone Trump supporters standing rah-rah for this guy. Clearly he's overtly racist. Clearly, I mean, the news said so. 
He said he's literally Hitler. Well, let me do some research into this guy. And as I delve into this, I'm going to get all of the facts, all of the daggone uh, information I can possibly contain. And I'm going to go after these Trump supporters and beat them down with facts. End up red pilling myself and doing the research. That just goes to show that when you do your research and you actually educate yourself, you better believe you end up <laughs> on the right side of history. I, I was looking at uh, the right as opposed to the left, and I started with the uh, Young Turks, and I was looking at them, and I was like, goodness gracious, these people are so freaking emotional. And here I am, a leftist, and I'm saying, these people are emotional. I can't deal with that. Give me the facts. Give me the stats. Give me the data. I don't want to hear about your emotion. I don't want to hear your opinion. I want to know facts, because that's how I'm going to beat these Trump supporters. So I'm sorry, Young Turks. You came at it with all emotion and zero facts. So then I was like, okay, let's see what the right side of history has to offer. If you could tell your left yourself one thing, what would you say? Think with your brain and not your skin color. I am not the sum amount of skin or melanin. That's not who I am. It's about content of character as opposed to color of skin. I think that one gentleman, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King said that. Yes, indeed. It's about content of character as opposed to color of skin. And we have it reversed within the black community. We say it's all about color of skin as opposed to content of character. Do you think black lives matter? Oh, 100%. Black lives do indeed matter. But you know what? You know what else matters? White lives, Hispanic lives, Asian lives, all lives. That's why we say all lives matter. When, we be, when people say, this is what I have about the issue with black lives matter, the whole trope. When we look at this, Black lives have mattered, right? Especially when it comes to society. We help create and fashion society. Goodness gracious, how are you gonna sit here and say that black lives don't matter or insinuate that? Well, we all know that that's false, especially when it comes to these uh, uh, race hustlers. These race hustlers understand that. They understand that, but there's no money to be gained from such a notion as telling the truth. So they're gonna go ahead and tell you and feed you all kinds of lies when it comes to black lives not mattering. We all understand that to be false. Black lives do indeed matter, 100%. So then what is the biggest issue facing the black community? Uh, there's a lack of self-accountability and responsibility. There is the issue of feminism that's crept into the black community, as well as welfare, right? You look at welfare, and the government said, you know what, well, we will give you this money, but you got to kick that man out the home, right? Don't you dare marry that man. You kick him out the home and we'll give you this money. Feminism then came in and said, you know what? You don't need a man in the first place. Definitely kick that man out the home and you can do it all by yourself. And of course, the lack of a self-accountability and responsibility has taught us that, hey, no matter what, if we succeed, it was our own tenacity and grit. But if we fail, it was all the white man's fault. And those three things are what's holding down the black community to this day. Do you think America's systemically racist? Heck no. Heck no. At this point, 2022, are you kidding me? You're trying to tell me in 2022, America is holding you down and holding you back institutionally, right? We're talking institutionally. We're talking from the top down. You are not allowed to compete with other white people in, in the same space, in, in, in society, in culture. You're trying to tell me that? I'm sorry. You cannot feed me that. We all know better than that at this point in time. I mean, you look at the advancements that black people have made. You look at the strides that we have made as a community, right? What we have done is done something so magnificent and so, I mean, you want to talk about a rags to riches story. That's what the black community is. What is the first word that comes to your mind when you think about the BLM riots? <laughs> Violent. I mean, you look at the, the BLM riots in which they caused billions of dollars worth of damage. Not to mention an incredible amount of damage to our own community. Let me paint this for you. 
Black Lives Matter murders black people. How about that for a news flash? Burned up our own shops, disenfranchised their own communities, and now they want to sit here and act like they're doing something beneficial for us. Oh, they stand for us. Why don't we talk about the biggest issue when it comes to black on black crime, which is abortion, killing off our own race in record rates. But black power, right? Huh? Black lives matter. Okay, you missed me with that. Can you tell us a little bit about critical race theory? Oh goodness, that is not something that is a good thing for America. Now, when you look at critical race theory, there's, there's certain pillars that you know hold up critical race theory. One is that uh, you know America's systemically and, and, and helplessly racist, right? Which we all know to be false. Another premise is that white people are all perpetrators when it comes to race, which we all know to be false. Racism is a human condition, not a white condition. Also that uh, it's not about objective truth, it's about subjective, right? It's about what you feel, right? And that's what they always preach to you. It's all about your lived experience. Oh, what it is that you've gone through in your life. And that becomes your primary source of data, right? Not the fact that, hey, you may have had a bad experience. You may have had a bad couple of experiences back to back, but that's not indicative of a whole race of people. That's not indicative of a whole swath of people. That's not indicative of society, right? But when it comes to critical race theory, they say, hey, objective truth out the window. And they say black people can't be racist. Oh my goodness. That is the biggest farce I have ever. Anybody can be racist. I would know. I was one of them. Okay? I would know that. So you can't come at me with this. Oh, black, can't, black, black people can't be racist. Oh, it's all about systems of oppression and, and the hierarchies and who's in the, the, the dominant uh, uh, race at the time. They're the ones that can be racist. The dominant race can be racist, but the non-dominant one. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. You can't just change the definition of words just to suit your subjective idea of what is and what isn't. That's not the way language works. So CRT is terrible for America. It is tearing apart our, our, our citizenry. It's putting color against color, race against race, people against people. It's making people tribalistic. And I'm so sick of the tribalism that's going on in America. How do we fix the racial issues in America? I think that Morgan Freeman had a good answer to that originally. He said to stop talking about it. But two, we have to address the racism when it uh, when it's actually prevalent, you know, because there is still racism in this world and it's being perpetrated by all sides. So when anybody commits an act of racism, we have to call it out. And I don't care what color, I don't care what ethnicity, I don't care what creed they are. You have to call it out when you see it. That's the way we correct it. And also, when it comes to racism, I'm, I must say, we got to stop watering down the term and just say everything's racist, right? Just because you're debating someone and they're getting the better end of you or they're, they're getting the best of you, doesn't make them a racist, right? It, it doesn't. If a white guy talks about, you know, what's going on within the black community and saying that abortion is an issue within the black community, that's not a racist statement, right? He's just pointing basic facts and basic truths. So we need to get down to the nitty gritty and stop whining and crying all the daggone time when it comes to the idea of racism that everyone's being racist to you. Let me, let me speak to this too. If someone, if there's a white guy and he doesn't shake your hand or he doesn't say hi to you, it doesn't make him racist. If you get pulled over by the daggone cop because he's going 90 miles per hour in a 15 mile per hour zone, it's not because he was targeting you because he's a racist. That's not the way things work. Goodness gracious, like I said, self-accountability and responsibility, take personal agency over your daggone life and get over it. What do you mean when you say soft bigotry of low expectations? This is special. Oh, this this is for you, white liberals. This this is for you. Um, white liberals have this knack to treat the black community like we're special ed. And what I mean by that is typically when it comes to um, special ed kids, they can do no wrong, right? Um, you have a degree of sympathy and um, overt empathy and, and massive amounts 
and thinking that, oh, this poor guy, he, he doesn't know any better. I mean, oh, it's, it's okay that you did that. He, excuse him, he, he, he's, he's special needs. He, he doesn't really know any better, guys. It's, it's, just leave him be, right? Let's go light on the punishment of this individual because he just doesn't know any better. That's the soft bigotry of low expectations that the white liberals have when it comes to the black community. Oh, these black, oh, they're tearing up their own cities, all oh, the BLM riots, oh, they're just upset. Let them riot. Oh, it's, it's okay. It's, it's all right. At the end of the day, I mean, uh, I mean, we wouldn't expect this from us. We wouldn't expect that from our own community. But when it comes to them, ah, uh, you know, they're, they're a little upset right now. We can't intervene when it comes to that. That's the soft bigotry of low expectations. And I'm so sick of it when it comes to these white liberals always trying to showcase that when it comes to us. We are not your pet projects. We are people who are equal. And I need you to understand that. What do you think the biggest misconception of black conservatives is? I remember when I made that switch, I went online and I, I posted something positive about Trump. And I was absolutely eviscerated for it. And people that I've known for quite some time who knew me and knew what I was all about, these individuals turned on me in a quick second and I was called everything. Coon, Uncle Tom, white man's slave, white man's dog, race traitor, self-hater. Why? Because I'm thinking for myself? As time went on, I had to grow a thicker skin and I realized that black conservatives have a, a bad stigma when it comes to the left because they do see us as sellouts. The, the black conservative is not the sellout. They're a runaway slave, right? And we're looked upon with disdain because we got away. We're here to better the black community. We're here to say, hey, we can achieve whatever it is that we want out of life, right? We can do whatever we want. We can achieve greatness. There is no limit to us whatsoever. We love our country. We love America. And at the end, that's it. There's this interesting experiment, right? It's called the flea experiment. And this particular flea experiment, there is these fleas, you put them in a jar, right? And they will try to jump out of this jar, but they'll hit their head on the lid. And after a while, these fleas will adjust to its surroundings. And it will only jump as high, just as high, just high enough where they don't hit their head on the lid or hit their body on the lid. And you can remove the lid and the fleas will not jump out of that daggone jar, okay? When these fleas reproduce, their babies will do the same. And it's indicative of leftism and the leftist mindset. Now, don't get me wrong, there was a lid on the black community for a long time. There was a lid on us and we weren't able to excel. Some people did, but for the most part, we weren't able to due to slavery, Jim Crow, whatever have you. That lid is gone now. The left is keeping us generationally in a place where they're saying to the black community that you can't jump out of this daggone jar. It's a construct that you have within your mind and the black conservative is trying to get you to understand the lid is gone, achieve greatness, achieve everything you've ever wanted out of life, do whatever it is that you wanted to do. That's what we're trying to get you to understand, but yet and still we're demonized. We're told that we are the worst kind of people. We're the worst kind of person. We're the worst kind of black person at that. As a matter of fact, we're not even black. We don't identify with the black struggle because we're trying to get you to reach your potential. That's why I don't understand it. But yet and still a thug on the block, someone who's trapping on the black, someone who's selling drugs to his community, they get more props than we do who are educated and trying to tell you, you don't have to resort to that. You can do better. We're the bad guy. The conservative is the bad guy. We're trying to help you out. The liberals trying to hold you down, but I'm the bad guy, right?